Good morning and happy Easter. We are so happy to see you here this morning. I'm happy to be back with you. If you will all stand with me as we sing and worship this morning. church amen you may be seated christ is risen today i'm thankful that you are here to be a testimony to that that uh 
that though the earth, um, the world that we live in is filled with darkness and sometimes there is pain and there is still suffering, yet we come together today to say that that is not the end. That our God is still at work, that there is still a future, that God is still raising people out from the dead and calling us into new life. And so thank you for your presence here. My name is Sean Wallace. I'm the pastor here at First Christian Church. Uh, yes, I'm old enough to be the pastor. <laughs> Why do you ask? Uh, no, it's good to be in God's house. And um, welcome to everyone who's worshiping online with us. We're thankful for uh, that online community that, that comes and brings your presence as well. We are thankful for you. Um, a lot of our Blast Zone kids are in the back for baptisms, um, but we are thankful for all the families, and I hope that you experience a resurrection today. I invite you to take a few moments to, to think about the places in your life that, that you struggle with, or where you see darkness in our world, and to just open yourself up this morning to the presence of God, that God would bring a touch of life, that God wants that goodness, that abundant life for you today. And I hope that you'll open yourself up as we prepare to worship together. Uh, if you are our guest today, um, we always like to say that we don't want you for your pocketbook. And so when it comes time for the offering a little later in the service, uh, feel free to sit back, relax, uh, just worship and enjoy the music and know that your presence with us is gift enough. And, um, and as we worship, um, uh, it's important, an important thing that we do that every one of us brings a part of God within us. God's spirit is in every person here and so we have some time to share that with each other. And so if you're online, I hope that you would uh, interact in the chat, say hello, maybe send a text to someone, check in on social media, share a little love and joy. And if you're here in the sanctuary, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to greet each other, to, to maybe hug a neck and uh, share some of that love and joy with somebody else. Let's all stand up, slip out our pew, uh, say happy Easter to somebody and let's worship together. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Well, we're coming to the culmination of a very important week. Last Sunday, we celebrated the triumphal but pretty humble entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper, Jesus washed feet. Jesus was betrayed. He was tried. He was denied three times. He died on the cross, but death was conquered, the tomb was empty, the grave could not hold him, Christ is risen, praise the Lord. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come today with praise on our lips and praise in our hearts. Let us be reminded daily of the sacrifice you made for us, each one of us, no matter what our walk. Help us to show your love through our actions, our words, and our lives. As we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father. all the children to come down to the front. No? Nope. Baptism. <laughs> you, may be, you may be seated. <laughs> Amen. It's a, it's a joy and a blessing. Um, if you kiddos, if you all want to sit right there, you're welcome to. You can sit right there where you can see the baptisms if you want. That's okay. Um, it's a joy and a blessing to, to come to this time and to share in, uh, in these, these baptisms. For these waters mean that there are young lives that are choosing their future direction, that they are committing themselves to following a life of self-sacrifice, of giving themselves in love to others and to allowing God to work his ways through them in this world. And so it's a blessing to, to be together and to celebrate these. I invite you to join me in prayer. Oh God, as we come to this time, we ask you to remind us of our baptisms, of our commitments and our hopes and dreams to follow you. And God, we pray for these lives that pass through these waters, that your spirit would be upon them, that you would touch them in deep ways, and that you would continue to work through them. God, we know that you have great plans for each of these young ones, and we pray for your will to be done in them and through them, for the world to be changed because you planted them in it. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen.
This is Sharon Bates, and I'd like to ask all the family and friends if you would stand, family and friends of Sharon, so she can see you, know your love and support. So Sharon, since you have made your good confession, you believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he is your Lord and Savior. It's my joy and honor to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Samuel Burton with the family and friends of Samuel. Please stand in support of him so he can see you. Samuel, God is going to do great things in you and through you. And since you've made your good confession of faith, it is my honor, my blessing to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is Ezra Kate Easterling, and with the family and friends of Ezra, please stand so she can see you. So Ezra has a special spirit about her. She's a sweet person who doesn't say much, but the Spirit of God is upon her and is going to do great things through her. Ezra... Since you are a blessing from God and have made your commitment to God, it's my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Maiden Holly. Would the family and friends of Maiden please stand? Maiden, you are special and wonderful, created by God in God's own image. And since you've made your confession of faith, it's my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Eleanor King. Would Eleanor's family and friends please stand? So Eleanor, I want you to see the people who care about you, who pray for you, who will encourage you, and who are your family of faith. Since you have made your good confession, it's my pleasure and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is Audrey King. Would Audrey's family and friends please stand? 
Audrey, see all these people who love you and who support you in this call. Would you step back here with me? Audrey, as you are a blessing from God and to this world, and since you've made your good confession of faith, it's my joy and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Celie McGarity. Would Celie's family and friends please stand? All right, step right back here. See everybody out there for you. Hold on to this. Celie, as God has made you wonderfully and continues to call you to follow that good path, and since you have made your confession of faith, it's my honor to baptize you in these waters in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is Caden Reed, and uh, Caden's the oldest sibling. Would you stand, uh, all of his family and friends? Caden, these folks here love you, and they will encourage you on this Christian walk. Caden, I'm excited for what God is going to do in you. As God continues to lead you and guide you and grow you into a great man, it is my honor to baptize you in these holy waters in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is Jaden Reed. Would family and friends of Jaden please stand in support of him? Jaden, these people love you. They care about you. They see God in you. And they look forward to seeing what God continues to do through you as you grow and mature. Since you've made your confession of faith to follow God, to call Jesus your Lord and Savior, it's my honor and my blessing to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Carissa Reed. Would Carissa's family and friends please stand? Carissa, as these folks stand up, they're saying that you are valuable to them, that they love you and they want to encourage you and continue to walk this road with you. Step back here with me. Step back. Step down. Yeah, step down. Step down. Step down. Come stand right here. Come stand right here. There you go. There you go. Carissa, it's my joy to be able to baptize you into the family of faith in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Ariana Grace Wallace. And would Ariana's family and friends please stand? Ariana, you are incredibly special.
God loves you, God created you, and God has brought you to this point in your life. And so since you've made your good confession, it is my joy and my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Richard Nash is coming to baptize Aria Nash. Will Aria's family and friends please stand? Aria, based upon your confession and your desire to follow Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Will you all pray with me? God, this is a good day. Thank you so much for making it. Thank you for giving us this day as a reminder that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. He got out. And just as he got out and he lived a life of love and showed us how to live, please help these, these people also go out and live a life of love and help us as a congregation to help them in that journey. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, we invite the children. <laughs> Jesus loves the little children, every single boy and girl. Planting seeds when they are small, bearing fruit as they grow tall, spreading Jesus' love through Rogers and the world. Good morning. Happy Easter. Okay, my nose is running a little bit. Um, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Um, okay, so um, this morning we're going to talk about what we believe and God's promises to us. Okay, let's see. I need... Well, thank you. Because it's pink? I figured. I figured. Um, let's see. Well, some of you... Will you read for me? I need some readers. Um, hey, Mike, will you read for me? Yep, 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 yep. I asked you to read. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I can read. Hang on. Who else is going to read? Who else? Wait. I got to go over this way. Wait. Oh, wait. Sh Sorry, Jacob. You can come. Come here. With the bunny. Okay. Don't read them yet. Okay. So, <clears throat> does anybody ever ask you if you go to church or where do you go to church? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. No. no? Yes. Yes. What do you tell them? First Christian Church. Tell me you go to the First Christian Church. Anybody ever ask you? What do you tell them? Okay, FCC Rogers. Um, well, people sometimes ask me if I go to church and where to go. I go to church, and I tell them I go to the First Christian Church in Rogers on 13th and Oak is what they always want to know. Is that that one downtown? Yep. And then they ask me the strangest question. Sometimes they say, do you celebrate Easter? And I always, I, that just seems like such a strange question to me. But I guess it's because they don't know what we believe here. So um, um, I'm going to have you read in just a minute. My yellow card you're going to read last. Okay. Um, but God and Jesus made some promises to us. Okay. So if you have one of the white cards, will you read for us? I will, Isaiah 41, 10. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Come to me and who labor and are heavy. 
laden, and I will give you rest. I don't know what you for I know the plans I have for you. Declare Lord's the Lord plans to give you a future and hope. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Anymore. Where's the yellow card? Okay, you start. Okay. John 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And where I am, you may be also. And one more promise God made. John three thirty six. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Okay, so that's what the Bible says. Um, God promises us. Okay, and Jesus made promises to us. And um, so when these young people got baptized today, they are telling people what they believe. Okay, they're telling people that they believe in God's promises. And so um, when someone asks you where you go to church or if you go to church, okay, that's your chance to tell them that you believe in God's promises okay, and you believe that Jesus loves you and you believe in God and, and you will have the chance when somebody says to you, did you go to church yesterday? You can tell them that. Okay. All right. Will you pray with me? Okay. Will you pray with me, Taylor? Okay. Dear Lord. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and what he did for us. I pray this in his name. Amen. Happy Easter. Okay. Amen. Thank you, kiddos, for, for leading us in worship. Um, as we go to this time of prayer, I want to share a few things that you can remember in your prayers and uh, we ask you to pray with some folks about. Uh, first of all, um, uh, it's a joy to have all these Easter lilies here in honor and memory of a number of folks uh, that mean a lot to us. And so we, uh, we thank, e thank God for each of those lives that are represented by the Easter lilies. Uh, also, if you want to submit a prayer request, you can do it on the yellow cards that are there in the pews. Drop that in the, the offering plate. Or you, better yet, you can go to the church website, fccrogers.org, in the Prayer Matters tab and submit it on there. Let us know if you want the whole congregation to pray uh, or just a confidential group of pastors and elders. Um, some prayers we have. Uh, I ask you to continue praying for Ron Pryor uh, as Debbie Cox passed away um, unexpectedly. Uh, her memorial service will be this Thursday, the 4th, at 3 p.m. Uh, right here. So um, please continue to remember Ron and uh, Debbie's family in your prayers. Dale Reidenauer uh, has double pneumonia, and so pray for him. And um, Marion Handley uh, is at Mercy Hospital. She had a heart attack yesterday. And so please remember Marion in your prayers. Uh, Jim Agatari, um, is she here this morning? She's home, but she's doing good. So she, she's had a lot of sickness and was really struggling, was in the hospital for a bit. So she's home, she's doing well. So we'll change that to thank God for, for watching out for that sweet girl. Um, Sandy Andrews uh, asked us to pray. She had a 16-year-old grandson, Garrett Brown, who passed away from cancer uh, on Monday. So please remember uh, Garrett's family and Sandy Andrews. Uh, it is a joy to celebrate Easter and resurrection, that there is life after death. And so I'm thankful for, for you and for what God is doing. It's a joy to celebrate these young lives, um, the way that God continues to lead them. They are a blessing. And it's great to have Bree back uh, from maternity leave. There she is. And baby Rowan Kelly. Uh, I, I say, look, but don't touch baby. Uh, seriously. Um, she's a three weeks old, and so uh, it's a blessing to have you all back in our family of faith. And I uh, ask you to continue to pray for our search team and who God is calling to serve as our other pastor here 
at First Christian Church. I'm going to give you a few moments of silent prayer, and then I'll lead us all in a prayer together. Let's pray. Oh God, our hearts are full. We thank you for your presence, that even when we find ourselves in the deep darkness, we know that that is not the end. We know that you are continuing to work, and so God, thank you for the ways that you continue to lead us and guide us. The way that you have brought us through those baptismal waters, like the waters of the Red Sea, and delivered us. Oh God, as we pass through the waters and go through the fire, we know that it is a resurrection, that you continue to give life beyond death. And so God, continue to work your ways in us, continue to shape us with your own hands to be your people and forgive us. Forgive us the times when we have ignored your calling, the things that we have heard you calling us to go and do and yet we have forgotten or we have neglected or we simply didn't show up. God, forgive us and welcome us back once more. For we know that your grace is bigger than we can imagine. That you love us as your children and that you still have plans for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. And so God, we give ourselves to you. And we ask you to work your way in the sick, in the well, in the hurting, in the poor, and in the ones with more than enough. God, work your kingdom for good. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all of God's people say, amen. Grab your Bible and open to the Gospel of John, chapter 19, beginning at verse 41. And I'd like to share the resurrection story as John records it there. I always encourage you to have your Bible. Uh, it'll also be on the screen behind me, and so you can read along there as well. John 19, 41, he writes this. He says, At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, 
meaning before the Passover. And since the, the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus' body there early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, sometimes called the beloved disciple. And she said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put Him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him a second time and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I've seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Would you pray with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be not only pleasing and acceptable, but may they be your words your thoughts, and your wisdom for each of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, I want to take you very briefly with me to the Holy Land. If you ever get the chance to go and visit Jerusalem, you'll probably go and see two sites in particular. The first one is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. And this this church, I've got a picture of it here, is a massive church, and it is just wall to wall with people. I mean, you walk through like this, trying to skirt through everybody, and then you go to this little center holy place there, and there's this massive line that stretches around and around, just throngs of people like, like hamsters trying to squeeze down into one little spot. And then you go in there, and you see the place where they supposedly laid the body of Jesus in the tomb. This is the oldest place where they say may have been where Jesus' body was laid. But you may also go visit a second place that is called the Garden Tomb. The Garden Tomb, they say, may or may not have been the place it was discovered back in the mid-1800s, but it feels different. As you come into this garden and it's a little more peaceful, not the throngs of people, and there's this little hidden tomb in the rock. They say maybe the place where Jesus was laid was here or someplace like this. You know, anytime you get two or more people together, you're going to have two or more different perspectives, two or more ideas of, of what God is doing or how God is working or even where it was God was. Well, the Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are no different. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all their great religious storytellers. And the way they wrote their Gospels was they, they, they wanted to tell the stories of Jesus and they figured that the message of Jesus and what Jesus wanted us to know would come through in that greater life story 
of Jesus Christ. But John, John's a bit different. John's kind of like the, the old theology professor in the college. John, John has a purpose, and he, he employs a story here and there, but his primary focus is to teach theology. He's wanting to teach the right beliefs about Jesus and God and, and what that all meant in the world. And so rather than a string of chronological stories depicting Jesus' larger life, John will often te- tell us about a miracle that Jesus did or what he calls a sign. And then he launches into these long, difficult monologues that convey theology. John, the Gospel of John is rich in symbolism and it has very subtle shades of meaning. He uses many people and things metaphorically to represent other ideas. For instance, the the beloved disciple that we read about here symbolizes the followers of Jesus who choose the right things, who are there following and seeking after Jesus. Likewise, Jesus is the Passover Lamb of God. And so in the Gospel of John, Jesus is crucified on the day before Passover as the Passover lambs were being slaughtered for that celebration of putting the blood over the doorposts because Jesus saves from death. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have Him being crucified the day after Passover. So now that you know all that, everything is clear as mud, right? I thought to myself as I was going through this week, I thought, what is it that is unique and special about John? What is it in this gospel, in this resurrection story, that is important that John wants us to recognize? This is where the sermon gets fun, y'all. Matthew says, the gospel of Matthew says that Mary Magdalene came to the tomb at dawn. Mark says she came just after sunrise. Luke says she came at early dawn. But John, John says Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. Because it's John, I wonder what he's trying to say. I wonder if what he's trying to say is that that the light has not come quite yet. It's still dark. It still feels dark. There's still that abiding presence of darkness. Jesus has risen, yes, but but Mary still feels in the dark. She still, not only is that way physically, there's not only a physical lack of luminescence, but there's a spiritual lack of luminescence as well. All that the empty tomb means to Mary at this point is that the body has been stolen. There's grave robbers out there. We need to put out a missing persons report. John is also the only gospel that says Jesus was buried in a garden. The other three don't say anything about that. He says he was buried in a garden tomb. And and it's also very odd. What, What makes Mary think that this resurrected Jesus is a gardener? Of all the professions, of all the people who could have shown up, why does she think gardener? And I wonder if John's trying to communicate something here. If you go all the way back in your Bible, turn to the very beginning of time in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapters 2 and 3, it describes God planting a garden, the perfect garden of Eden. And in that garden, people walk with God, they talk with God face to face, they have this deep and abiding relationship as they are the ones who have been shaped by God's own hand, by the dust of the earth. There's an abundance for everybody, there's no want or lack or need, there's no death, only life, and everything is at peace. But then, then the people decide, you know what, we want more. We want more than we have right now. And they're they're looking for the knowledge of good and evil because they want to be like little gods. And so they eat from the tree that they're supposed to avoid and they introduce into that perfect garden the consequences of sin. The consequences that follow are brokenness, pain, strife in life. It's, it's estranged relationships, a, a distance from God. It's, it's death. And no longer will they live forever, but now they will taste the brokenness of death. And as they are cast out of the garden, the final thing that God does is God makes them 
clothes. Clothes to cover their nakedness and their shame. But now, now here's Mary Magdalene. Like new Eve in the garden. The tree that held the fruit of their sin has now morphed into the gruesomeness of a cross. There was no limit to our shame and sin and brokenness. Our our sin and rebellion had grown to such proportion over the eons that we would even crucify God Himself, a 100% innocent man. We would murder Him and call it justice. Nevertheless, our sin had buried a seed in the garden. And by the resurrecting power of God, that seed had taken on life, had sprouted from the ground, and took, walked out of the tomb. The gardener had returned to return to his garden to speak to his children face to face once again, to bring life and healing and an end to pain. The grave clothes were left in the tomb because there was no longer a need to cover their shame. They were forgiven. There was no longer a need for grave clothes for death had been swallowed up by life. The resurrection had come. But as John said before, it's still dark. The question that's posed in the darkness is, who are we looking for? Mary, who are you looking for? Our sinfulness in the garden was looking for the way that we could become our own gods. But Mary, the new Eve, is finally just looking for God. She's looking for Jesus. Where is my Savior? She turns to Jesus there in the garden, but she does not fully recognize Him. She just sees a gardener. However, when Jesus calls to her by name, she turns a second time, and she finally gets it. That same kind of odd thing happens with the beloved disciple in verses 8 and 9. I, I don't know if you notice or not, but they, they really seem odd put together. In verse 8, John said that the beloved disciple saw and believed, but immediately he turns around and parenthetically he says, they still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. I think, okay, which is it? Did he believe or did he not understand? Well, this perfect model, beloved disciple, he believes even while he doesn't completely understand. Because y'all, our believing, our turning, our transformation, it doesn't take place in a moment. It's not a one-time deal in this baptistry where suddenly it all makes sense. No, it is a process. It is a continued turning again and again to the one who is calling us by name. Rue, I'm calling you. Jake, I'm calling you. Yes, you are my child and I love you. You. The good news, the good news in all this, though, is that our God is back. Our God is alive. The good gardener has returned to set all things right. Death is dead. Shame is gone. Life has come. We have that life and that forgiveness. For God loves us even as we are, even in our brokenness, even as we were the ones who nailed him to the cross. And we are invited back to that perfect garden once again. The book of Revelation, if you go to the opposite end of the Bible, the very end of Revelation, where it describes the end times, it describes a garden where the river of life flows from the throne of God and there's a tree that bears fruit once, uh, bears fruit every month, every, every month of the 12 months. And the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nations. And there's peace. And there's goodness. And all can walk face to face with God once more. That's what God is doing. That's where we are headed. That's the good news of Easter. Would you pray with me? Oh God for the sin and brokenness in our lives, for the shame that we feel and the ways that we have been the cause of our own hurts, we ask forgiveness. And we thank You for that love 
that we are never too bad, never too gone to, to be forgiven, to be met there in the garden and invited in once again. And so today, God, help us to be those who go to the tomb, who look in and then walk away ready to shine light. Help us to see you as you are and to embody your presence in this world to to bring hope and love to all that we meet. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. And all of God's people said, Amen. If you're here today and God is moving in you in some way, then we'll have some elders and I'll be down front. We'd love to pray with you. There will also be some elders in the back as well. Or if you'd like to join First Christian Church, we would love to have you as a part of this body of folks who we accept each other as we are. And we'd love to accept and welcome you with the arms of God. And so whatever it is that's on your heart, I invite you to respond, whether that's by prayer yourself or by prayer with someone else. We're coming to join First Christian Church. I invite you all to stand on your feet, to sing, to lift your voices to God, and to respond to what God is doing. now come to my favorite part of our service. All are welcome at this table. Please partake of the bread as it is passed and hold the cup so that we can all share in it together. I recently read an article that defined the Sabbath as a vision of the kingdom of God. The Sabbath meal is a shared meal. It's a meal with laughing and singing a room filled with holiness. It reminds us and continues with the promise of that kingdom. What if Monday Thursday was just like that? It was the last supper of the old world, the last meal under Rome. It was the first feast of the kingdom that has come, a new age. This table is center. Pull up a chair. Invite a friend, pass the cup, keep it going hand to hand, filled, refilled, time after time after time. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. After he had blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup, blessed it, after he had poured the wine, and he gave it to the disciples and said, take and drink. This is my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we come to your table today to celebrate your new kingdom, a kingdom of abundance, generosity, and unending thanksgiving. Help us to remember to fill and refill and pass it hand to hand, time and time again. In your name we pray. 
Amen.
this is the garden. This is the kingdom of God. Where as you look around, no matter who you are, where you've been, you are accepted and loved. Not because of your perfection, but because you are God's child. Let's drink together. As Jesus gave all for us, we must remember to also give back to him. There are so many ways to give, whether it be of time, of talents, of money. Please remember that if you are our guest, your presence with us is our gift. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have given to us. As you have given, we also give back to you. Please guide us to use your gifts to do your work in our world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for sharing part of your Easter Sunday with us. Uh, it's a blessing to be together. Um, I hope that if this is your first time, you'll come back again. Um, every Sunday, uh, we hope to share love and encouragement that will get everyone through the week and through the difficult things that come against us. So we'd love to see you again. Come back again. Uh, a few announcements I want to share with you. First of all, if you don't have um, family to celebrate Easter uh, lunch with, you're invited to our house. And there are directions at the kiosk that have our phone numbers as well. Um, we'll probably eat about 1230 as soon as I can get home and, and help get things together. So uh, come join us for Easter lunch if you don't have somebody to share Easter lunch with. Um, we'd love to have you. And then there's a fellowship opportunity. All the women of the church get together, sip with sis. If you'd like to make some connections and some friends with some other women, um, this Wednesday, 9 a.m. at the Starbucks on Walnut. And so you can come make some friends. If you have to work, uh, like us, uh, and we're going to do it on Tuesday evening, April 16th at 6 p.m. at the city pump, the food trucks right over here. And so uh, come for a sip with sis and meet some other women and share some encouragement with others. Uh, cross training is our ministry for 6th through 12th graders. 
And uh, I'm running that right now, uh, since we're without another pastor, um, and we are having a ton of fun. And so I see a number of y'all out here that I'm trying to get in touch with. I want to call you. I want to say, come. We're not doing it tonight. All of our youth programs are off. We say, spend Easter with your family. But next Sunday, we're going to have a big, fun spring kickoff. And so come. Uh, we have stuff for all ages, from birth all the way up to 12th grade. And so I'm going to try to get all you kids and all your parents and say, come on April 7th. We're going to have a big, fun time together. Uh, it's at 5 p.m., 5 to 7 p.m. And then finally, take a lily home with you. Julia does not want to continue caring for them. So uh, take a lily, uh, share it with someone. Uh, they could use a little flower, a joy plant in your front yard. Um, ours come up every year in the front lawn, a front flower bed. And then invite a friend to come next Sunday and to join you to receive the goodness that you find, the hope that you find in this place. Uh, everyone stand on your feet, grab hold of someone else, connect to somebody, and we'll share a blessing as we go from this place. You who are God's beautiful and beloved disciples, go from this place and live the light, the hope and the goodness of the resurrection. Go and share the good news that God is planting new things even right now, that the kingdom is coming and all are invited. No matter who you are, God loves you. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.